Class 7, Unit 5A Uncle Podger Thanks a Picture Before you read Dear students, before you read the lesson, let's learn some more facts about the story. This lesson is a part of a comedy novel, Three Men in a Boat, written by Jerome K. Jerome. In this part, the narrator Jerome K. Jerome tells us about his great uncle Podger. Characters in the story other than Uncle Podger are his wife Aunt Maria Podger and his little children Jim, Tom, Will and the little girl. Apart from them, you will come across the narrator Jerome K. Jerome the charwoman and Mr. Goggles, the neighbor. There are people who in an attempt to do a work create chaos all around. Uncle Podger is one such person. In this part of the story, he takes up the task of hanging a picture on the wall. What happens thereafter is humorous. You never saw such a commotion up and down a house in all your life as when my uncle Podger undertook to do a job. A picture would have come from the frame maker and be standing in the dining room waiting to be put up. And Aunt Podger would ask what was to be done with it and uncle Podger would say, "Oh." You leave that to me. Don't you? Any of you worry yourselves about that. I'll do all that. And then he would take off his coat and begin. He would send the girl out for six penny worth of nails and then one of the boys after her to tell her what size to get and from that he would gradually work down and start the whole house. Now you go and get me my hammer, Will, he would shout. And you bring me the rule, Tom, and I shall want the step ladder. And I had better have a kitchen chair too. And Jim, you run around to Mr. Goggles and tell him, pass kind regards and hope his legs better. And will he lend me his spirit level? And don't you go, Maria, because I shall want somebody to hold me the light. And when the girl comes back, she must go out again for a bit of picture cord. And Tom, where's Tom? Tom, you come here. I shall want you to hand me up the picture. And then he would lift up the picture and drop it. And it would come out of the frame. And he would try to save the glass and cut himself. And then he would spring round the room looking for his handkerchief because it was in the pocket of the coat he had taken off. And he did not know where he had put the coat. And all the house had to leave off looking for his tools and start looking for his coat while he would dance around and hinder them. Doesn't anybody in the whole house know where my coat is? I never came across such a set in all my life. Upon my word, I didn't. Six of you! And you can't find the coat that I put down not five minutes ago. Well, all of the... Then he'd get up and find that he had been sitting on it and would call out. Oh, you can give it up. I've found it myself now. I must just as well ask the cat to find anything as expect you people to find it. And when half an hour had been spent in tying up his finger and a new glass had been got and the tools and the ladder and the chair and the candle had been brought, he would have another go. The whole family, including the girl and the charwoman, standing round in the semicircle ready to help. Two people would have to hold the chair and a third would help him up on it and hold him there. And a fourth would hand him a nail and a fifth would pass him up the hammer and he would take hold of the nail and drop it. There, he would say in an injured tone, now the nail's gone. 
and we would all have to go down on our knees and grovel for it while he would stand on the chair and grunt and want to know if he was to be kept there all the evening the nail would be found at last but by the time he would have lost the hammer where's the hammer what did i do with the hammer great heavens seven of you keeping around there and you don't know what i did with the hammer we would find the hammer for him and then he would have lost sight of the mark he had made on the wall where the nail was to go in and each of us had to get up on the chair beside him and we would each discover it in a different place and he would call us all fools one after another and tell us to get down and he would take the rule and remeasure and find that he wanted half 31 and 38 inches from the corner and would try to do it in his head and go mad and we would all try to do it in our heads and all arrive at different results and sneer at one another and in the general row the original number would be forgotten and uncle pojo would have to measure it again he would use a bit of string this time and at the critical moment when the old fool was leaning over the chair at an angle of 45 and trying to reach a point 3 inches beyond what was possible for him to reach the string would slip and down he would slide on to the piano a real fine musical effect being produced by the suddenness with which his head and body struck all the notes at the same time and aunt maria would say she would not allow the children to stand round and hear such language at last uncle pojo would get the spot fixed again and put the point of the nail on it with his left hand and take the hammer in his right hand and with the first blow he would smash his thumb and drop the hammer with a yell on somebody's toes aunt maria would mildly observe that next time that uncle pojo was going to hammer a nail into the wall she hoped he'd let her know in time so that she could make arrangements to go and spend a week with her mother while it was being done oh you woman you make such a fuss over everything uncle pojo would reply picking himself up why i like doing a little job of this sort and then he would have another try and at the second blow the nail would go clean through the plaster and half the hammer after it and uncle pojo be precipitated against the wall with force nearly sufficient to flatten his nose then we had to find the rule and the string again and a new hole was made and about midnight the picture would be up very crooked and insecure the wall for yards round looking as if it had been smoothed down with a rake and everybody dead beat and wretched except uncle pojo there you are he would say stepping off the chair on the char woman's corns and surveying the mess he had made with evident pride why some people would have a man in to do a little thing like that so this is the end of the humorous story about uncle pojo